I've been putting it off all summer, but it's finally time to tackle this. So those of you who've been with me for a while may have noticed that when we do the garden tours and I'm up here in the home garden, I've only been taking you to this boundary point. So at the back of the veg plot is this bed with the baby corn in, all the nasturtiums and the perennial purple sprouting broccoli. And this is where we normally either start or end our tours with the backdrop of this jasmine which is beautiful and lovely and lush and very convenient because it hides what's going on behind. And if we come through the little passage here, here's the big dirty secret that I've been keeping. Now this hasn't always looked like this. It has been neat and tidy in the past, but things have got a little bit out of control this year. And I could totally make excuses for that. Um, for instance, when I had the roof done and the scaffolding was up, a lot of the stuff that was around the house got dumped up here. Um, but to be honest, um, with the amount that I've had to do in the home garden and on the plot, the front garden, this has just got completely neglected and it has become a dumping area. But there are lots of things in here that are productive, that are still growing, that are nice. And I can't get to them. I can barely get to my compost heaps at the back of the garden. It's been a continual battle <laughs> to get through here um, with this gorgeous um, honeysuckle that's now in flower and smells delicious. But to get by it and get to the compost heaps has just been a nightmare. Um, all that stuff that we took down from the front garden, all that tansy, it just ended up being dumped on top of the wardrobe bed, which has not been planted up this year. And there's other things that I've missed because this has been such a dumpy area. For instance, the gooseberries. So I didn't get any gooseberries this year, not because there weren't any, but because I couldn't get to them and therefore the birds got them before I did. And actually my plum tree, which I um, severely pruned last year and did not think would recover. Um, it actually had loads of plums on, but I've eaten like two um, because of not being able to get to the tree and now most of them have either been taken by animals or fallen off. So, um, oh my gosh, I mean, look at the um, hazelnut tree behind me. It's put on so much growth. I mean, everything is really growing well here. In fact, there are things in here that shouldn't be growing well and have just appeared. For instance, a rhubarb that is growing in the hot bin. In that hot bin, I've also still got my first early potatoes in buckets, although my plan with those is to um, keep those for Christmas. So um, I'm, not, I'm just gonna kind of take the foliage off now. It's died back and store them indoors um, for Christmas in, the, in, that, in those pots in the soil. Um, what else is in here? I mean, I've got my rhubarb that's in the ground. The um, jostaberry has grown really well. Uh, and <laughs> I mean, the, the big star of this area is the Jerusalem artichokes. They are absolutely, you see them just behind me there, they are absolutely enormous. Um, and I'm sure there's other things going on in here, but I can't tell what they are. I mean, there's blackberries, <laughs> there's one behind you. Um, but yeah, it needs a thorough clean up. Uh, it needs to sort out. I think the wardrobe bed is gonna go. Hot bin needs emptying. A lot of mulching that needs to go on. And um, yeah, just a lot of cutting back and clearing. So this is a pretty big job. I've been promising you a project and this is it. And I'm hoping that by the end of this video, by the end of the week, I'm gonna have something respectable <laughs> to show you. I've enlisted mom to help. She's at the moment at the front of the garden. Um, she's pruning the tree over the pond because that's got a little bit out of control. Um, but my first job is to do the clearing back here of stuff. So pots, um, I've got um, cloches, flimsies, all sorts of stuff that has just been dumped into this area. So that's the first job, clear that stuff. Um, and then perhaps we can see the wood for the trees. Okay, so let's crack on.
the end of day one and um, I was all prepared to say, you know, sometimes it has to look worse before it looks better. But actually, I think we did a pretty good job. And uh, yeah, big thanks to mum for helping me out today. So here we go. So the first thing you might notice is that we can actually see in to the back of the garden and no weeds on the path. And there are actually two sets of slabs here, not just the one, and this was all overgrown. So yeah. And then we come through, there's been a little bit of weeding going on in the beds, um, but not an awful lot. But yeah, look, you can see the rhubarb now. And if I pan round to this side, there's the actual mint bed. You can see the bed, you can see the beehive, you can see the horseradish bed behind it, and the quince tree there. Lots of quinces on there this year. And if we carry on down, check this out oh there's actually bare ground and there's no weeds and i've had a little weed in the gooseberries but they're a bit prickly so that wasn't very easy um, but we have ended up with <laughs> a much bigger pile of cuttings than was there this morning but let's ignore that for now. If we come down here, I mean, yeah, this isn't brilliant, but it's better. The bag at the bottom here is full of leaf mold and it actually looks really good. But I just um, folded the other dumpy bags on top and there's all the pots. Uh, I have taken the potatoes off of the hotbed. They're now in the shed. So there's just this rhubarb. You see, the rhubarb is in a pot and uh, the pot, the, the rhubarb has rooted through the pot and into the hotbed. So that's the issue there. <laughs> so need to find somewhere to put that rhubarb. This is a little bit tidier, um, but yeah, this is still a bit of a, a dumpy area, but we're only on day one, only on day one. Uh, Dory's just checking out the compost heaps. So we've got a lot of the laurel branches, but these leaves break down really well. Well, they go re like really dry quite quickly. Um, so then I can shred those off the um, branches and add them to the compost pile, which is looking pretty big now, pretty high. So this side um, got quite a lot of cutting back done, but the other side, which is the ivy side, um, there's a lot more to do. Um, but it does really feel like it might be manageable now. <laughs> um, we definitely made a big dent, so that feels good. But I'm tired, really tired. I think it's time for a bath. So um, I'll join you here for day two. Well, it's day two. I am feeling a little less motivated. <laughs> Mum's not here to jolly me along and um, didn't sleep all that well despite all the hard work yesterday um, however i did have a little brainwave on the dog walk this morning um, because there is so much uh, green waste that we're producing when cutting back um, not only the stuff at the back of the garden but also um, the tree that mum pruned yesterday and pruned very well <laughs> it'll grow back it'll be fine um, so I was wondering about all this stuff because I've only got a little uh, garden waste bin um, and that's now full. And what can go in the compost has gone in the compost, but there's quite a lot of stuff that's not really compostable. It's, you would need a wood chipper to chip it and don't think I haven't thought about that. Um, or um, it's stuff that you don't want to put in the compost because it roots really easily, like the thing that we've got to tackle today, which is the ivy. And if you put ivy in the compost, it's just going to root and create issues later on. So um, my brainwave is this. Let's let's head down to the bottom of the garden. And one of the things that I had been thinking about on the plot was a dead hedge. And but most of the stuff actually that I create for a dead hedge is in the home garden. But there's actually nowhere in the home garden to have a dead hedge. There's no border that I need to make. But I was thinking what I could do is produce sort of... Um, a dead hedge boundary or border underneath these shrubs. What do you think? There's quite a space um, behind here up to the up to the fence and I think with the stuff you could just kind of shove it underneath 
<laughs> and it will gradually break down, it will create habitat and um, yeah, it will solve my problem. Because also, I mean, I could let this dry out and have a bonfire, but um, I've not really got anywhere to have a bonfire now. So what do you think? Does that sound like a viable plan? I think what I would need to do first of all is lift the canopy a bit here. Um, oh, the other thing that I thought it would be good for is suppressing some of the brambles and stuff that do grow under here. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Nothing to lose. Okay, right, I need to get changed. I need to get my scruffs back on and uh, yeah, crack on. Let's, let's see how much we can get done before lunch. Well, that's lifted the canopy, so now I can get that stuff and start putting it under here. And if I test it on this area first, and then I can see if I want to do the same further along. Okay. that went rather well. I'm not saying it's the most um, beautiful thing in the world um, but wow got rid of all of that into this area and uh, yeah. Well, so what I did was I tried to put um, the softer stuff in first and then the really big thick sticks and branches um, I've put uh, at the end so that they kind of keep everything in. Um, now the Thing that I didn't think about was usually with a dead hedge you have some poles uh, or stakes going along to keep everything back. I mean this is kind of sloped that way so it's not necessarily going to fall over. Um, it might be nice to define the edge but now I've got um, all that stuff out of the way. The bricks are uh, exposed and I could put the bricks all along here just to provide a bit of an edge. Um, and yeah see how it goes really. I've still got the stuff from the silk tassel tree to bring up and put in there as well and they're quite thick branches so that might give a bit more structure to it all but uh, often you have these ideas and um, it's like then you look at the space or you really think about it you're like no that's stupid but this one I think has paid off yeah happy with that I put um, anything that was spiky or most things that were spiky over this side and uh, yeah if I was to do this again I would definitely separate the spiky stuff um, from the rest of it because uh, yeah a bit painful um, but that's fine that can go in the council bin um, when that lot's emptied. Good good stuff right keep going.
it's been a while since I've been able to sit on this bench, I can tell you. Uh, but yeah, not bad. I mean, you could just keep going forever and ever. And um, I don't know how much I'd want to sit on this bench. It's a bit creepy under here. Um, there was so much cobweb um, in this section. I don't know what's living in there. Um, and I can't cut this anymore because this is the quince that I'm not sure if it's on my side of the boundary or my neighbour's side of the boundary, but obviously I'm getting a really great branch of it now and um, I want those quinces. So um, I'm not going to cut that back at all, but at some point um, I'm going to have to trim it or um, support it in some way. But yeah, now I can get through this edge. Um, so this has been cut back. I didn't cut it back too much because it is such a great habitat for birds. Um, it'll have the berries over the winter, which is food for birds. But also underneath here, I'd forgotten that at some point I had a lot of wood chip. It must have been when my conifers were taken down and uh, before I had a plot that needed wood chip. And I shoved all the wood chip under the ivy here. Um, and actually that's created such a nice habitat for creatures and uh, potentially hedgehogs and things. So um, I've not cut back too much underneath on this side, whereas I have on that side to make the dead hedge, which hopefully will also be a nice habitat for hedgehogs. But um, but yeah, pretty pleased with that. Um, now I've only got that far, so <laughs> it's still mess that end and the ivy comes right over at that end. I also did a little trim of the hazelnut just around the base um, to tidy that up. This still needs weeding between the Jerusalem artichokes. I have weeded a little bit in between the gooseberries. I've got this batch of uh, prickly stuff that needs to go in the bin. Um, so yeah, there's still plenty left to do, but we probably need to take a break. <laughs> on the back of the garden and while I'm all hot and sweaty and stuff um, I might as well go down to the plot and do a bit of watering down there see if there's anything else that needs doing but yeah pretty happy with that <laughs> Well, maybe that'll be the last time I sit on that bench. <laughs> oh dear. It's nice to have a bit of a change of scenery. Um, it's a nice little breeze actually. It's really warm today. It was meant to be a heat wave, but it's only like 24 degrees. And uh, it's not sunny, but it is very warm, very humid. But I've come down with my harvest basket. Um, I thought we might harvest a few bits and bobs from the plot for dinner. And uh, there's one thing in particular that I'm quite excited about harvesting. So let's go have a look. Right, got my basket, got my secateurs. Um, yeah, let's head to the front of the plot for the for the first thing. Uh, if you watched last week's episode, you can probably guess what it is I'm about to harvest. Here it is, peeking out from underneath the foliage. This is my tromboncino, and look how much it's grown in one week. Yeah, that's quite considerable. I mean, I could let it keep on growing and cure it as a winter squash, but I do prefer them young, actually. They're not as tasty when they're cured, certainly not as tasty as a butternut squash. So yeah, I think it's time to harvest this one. <laughs> oh, that's got corn. Okay, going for it. Oh, there's a potato growing in this bed. Of course there is. Uh, oh, he's a tiny baby corn. Well, not an actual baby corn. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> That'll make your dinner for one. 
Okay, we've got a corn. Let's leave the rest of those to carry on ripening. I do think they are pollinated because the silks are all brown. Um, so I think it is just a matter of giving them the time for the kernels to ripen. Now some corn that definitely isn't ready is my glass gem corn, but I did notice that it is starting to form cobs now, so that's good. And slightly weirdly that the silks are there, but there's really not much that uh, they're coming out of. But if I just take you around over here, you can see that they definitely are forming. So that's quite exciting. And it's time now to do the little shake, make sure they're getting pollinated. Okay, let's have a quick look at the brassicas. Looking fine. Uh, I did see a couple of caterpillars in here the other day, but I picked them off and I don't see any more. Now, of course, we can harvest courgettes. Yep, I can see some, some more. I was funny yesterday, um, my neighbour came round and uh, she got three courgettes for me. And I was like, no, no, I'm supposed to give you courgettes. Who are you giving me courgettes? Uh, but uh, yeah, oh, that's a different variety there. Um, so these are all Zephyr and they've been the ones that have been producing really well. But this is a pure yellow one, oh, just snapped the end, um, which now, what was the variety? There's the label. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Ah, brilliant. Oh, and there's loads on there. And it seems to be one of those ones where they just keep coming up the stem. Um, yeah, really good. Okay. Any more Zephyr? I think probably that one can come out. Okay. Better to pick them small than end up with huge ones. Any more, any more? I think that's it. So four more courgettes. Okay, um, tomatoes. So the outdoor tomatoes, well, ah, we do have a crushed heart ripening over the edge here, um, but it's not quite ready yet. And I did notice a little bit of damage on the side there, which is a shame. Actually, it's probably worth taking it off if it's damaged, isn't it? Let's do it, let's do it. See if it comes off easily. Oh yeah, fairly easily. There we go. First crushed heart, we'll let that continue to ripen on the windowsill and then cut that bit off when it comes to eating. So other than that, I think it's just the Barry's Crazy Cherry that are cropping. Now, um, Robin at Robin's Gardens did tell me that um, my blight scare that I had last week might be something else. It might be grey mould. Um, what's it called? I'll put it on the screen. And um, she got that on Barry's Crazy Cherry and only Barry's Crazy Cherry. And when I look around my plants, it's only really that one um, and actually perhaps the Midnight Roma that's looking a bit ropey. Um, certainly there's been no other signs of blight, um, but just, you know, a bit of dieback on the leaves. And in fact, the Roma look really quite sad. They look like they need a really good water, but I have been watering them. So I don't know. Let's, um, let's check out the ones in the greenhouse though. So what I've come down here to do is uh, water these. There's a few, that's a honeycomb there that we can, oops, <laughs> always drop them, don't I? We have to find them out in the bindweed. There we go, that's the honeycomb. Um, anything else? There's a little bit of um, discoloration on some of the leaves here, but um, I don't think any signs of blight. Um, we've got another one blushing up there. That's a black crim. That's not too far off. And I think we can probably take that as that lava. Can we? <laughs> okay, so just a few tomatoes to add to the pile at home. And we should probably take some of this tree spinach before <laughs> we're absolutely inundated. I mean, we already are really, aren't we? Because uh, just check it out. So much tree spinach, all self-seeded. I have not sown a single tree spinach this year. 
but I'm not complaining because um, I love it. I really like it. I find it very tasty. I like adding it to things. I like just stir frying it on its own and having it as a side dish. So yeah, very happy to have masses and masses of tree spinach. And it just looks so pretty, so pretty. So we'll add that to the basket. There we go. Right, I think that might be it for our harvest today. And I should do the thing that I actually came here to do, which was to water and feed the greenhouse tomatoes. We did have rain last night, so I'm hoping everything else is, is kind of all right. And, uh, and you know what? I am ready for a beer. When you do like hard gardening work, like I've been doing clearing the back, um, or mowing, mowing's always something that I feel deserves a beer as a reward. <laughs> so I think I'll head to mom and uh, see what she's got. Welcome to day three of my secret garden transformation and um, I'm actually starting in the greenhouse today because um, things need a water although they're looking great they're looking so beautiful in this morning sunshine the peppers the chilies um, and the tomatoes the tomatoes are just stunning and as I hinted at yesterday I have been cropping from these greenhouse tomatoes quite extensively now and I think oh, not quite tried every single one yet the the black tomatoes in particular are taking quite a while to ripen but um but i've had my first alice's dream now um i can't quite tell if it lives up to its reputation yeah i think i need to taste a couple more but um but i'm <laughs> i think i've said it before um the savior of this season has been this greenhouse and how well everything has been doing in here which is not to say of course that there aren't things that need doing in this greenhouse other than watering tidying up is one of the primary things it just seems like um just this reoccurring thing isn't it that the greenhouse needs tidying but uh, just as i had loads of abandoned pots at the back of the garden so the pot situation in here has got a little out of hand so we should add that to the to-do list um but not for this week this week I've got to focus focus on the back of the garden so um let's let's head up there and see what the first job of the day is going to be day three Perhaps on our way up there though, we can uh, check out some of the stuff that's started to appear in the home garden. One of which is this dahlia. This is the Alex Mingellus, I think it's called, dahlia. Uh, absolutely stunning, really beautiful. Um, it's about the only one that is flowering in the dahlia bed at the moment. Things are putting on growth and there are buds, buds over here. Uh, I think that's the totally tangerine. So yeah, I mean, we did have a flower in here, but that one's gone over now, so I need to deadhead that. Oh, actually, there's still one going there. That's a single, single red. And we also have our first zinnia, courtesy of Claire. And uh, the salvias are doing okay in here. And oh yeah, the anemone is now flowering. I've not had much luck with anemones in the past. Um, but it looks like my look is changing and this one is alive, established and flowering. Now things are a little messy down by the pond after the pruning of the silk tassel tree, but the pond is getting a lot more light now. Uh, it does need a clean up because obviously it's covered in duckweed and a lot of the prunings fell in here, but some of the plants in here are also flowering, um, which is great, really nice. And as we head down the garden, what have we got? We've got gladioli starting to come. You might remember I stuffed this bed full of gladioli and um, they've all come up. Ah, there we go. There's one that's actually flowering. There we go. Ah, oh, a nice little pink one. Is that focusing? There we go. There. 
yeah maybe I didn't bury them quite deep enough because they are falling over oh and look we've got more flowers on the pheasant berry oh they're so beautiful and the berries are edible so I'm looking forward to those in the autumn yeah, the salvias down here are doing really well as well. Those were all uh, propagated last year by me. Um, so I'm particularly proud of those. Lemon balm went crazy this year. And if we head into the veg patch, what have we got going on here? Seedlings are kind of coming up. Uh, the tender stem broccoli is sort of going over now. Still getting a few strawberries over there. And something I did last week is finish wood chipping around the beds over here. So you might remember that this section of the veg plot wasn't wood chipped. Um, and now it is. Apples are looking good. And if we come over to the big beds, these are doing pretty well. Uh, the <laughs> Cape gooseberries are put on so much growth, but still nothing ripe. And uh, some of the straw flowers are coming out again. Oh, look at the colour of that one. Love it. Love it. And yeah, most things are just kind of ticking over nicely in the beds. But um, oh, Dory's ahead of us. We can now go through to the back of the garden without having to battle my way through anymore. Can just walk even these... Oh no. <laughs> just not quite. I'm not cutting them down. Um, yeah, it still has that real secret garden feel though, even though I've done the cutting back. The hedging around here gives that sense of enclosure and it's something I've talked about before because it's something that I would really like on, on my allotment plot, but we're not allowed to have these kinds of boundaries between the plots. So it's nice that I do have it here in the home garden. And now that a lot of this is cleared away and you'll see it more once I get rid of the wardrobe bed, but there's just so much space down here. I mean, this is the equivalent of a full-size garden that you would get in a regular house or a new build house. This is the sort of size. Um, I mean, it might even be more. I've never actually measured it. Shall we do some steps? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. At least twelve meters long. What about width wise? Two, three, four. Five, six. Yeah, twelve, twelve by six, something like that. All right, that's the prickly stuff um, sorted out. So now we're on to this and this. Um, I don't know. Am I going to be able to just simply rip this apart? It's gone pretty rotten. Where am I putting my tea? Where have I put my tea, Dory? Do. Um, no, try this side. <laughs> okay, that's coming. Oh! <laughs> uh, okay, part off. That can go to the tip as well. Now oh, that's got to come out of there. Come on. Oh, there we go. We might only need to get one side off in order then to empty the compost and then the rest of it can be dismantled. Oh, there we go. Right, that's a lot of compost. So this has obviously been grown in. So we had blighty tomatoes in here last year. Um, there's been radishes in here. What else? All sorts over the last couple of years. Now mostly weeds. So what I'm thinking is all this soil can go into those beds. So they can mulch those beds. That's quite easy to just transfer this to there. Um, and then the hotbed can, has got the wood chip in that's been breaking down. So that potentially could then go on top of that as an additional mulch. Um, because this hasn't had much goodness put in it for a while. Yeah, I can't, can't really remember the last time this got much of a top up, to be honest. And um, this was the old pond. Um, it was uh, uh, a fish pond when I moved in and it, there was a break in the lining and all the water 
drained out and um, the fish I had to transfer to my little pond and it was too small for the size of the fish and we won't go into that right now but um, when it, I'd taken out the lining it felt like um, a great place to have my first veg plot and this was the very first veg plot in fact the berries that are down the side here were originally in here and it got too cluttered which is happening again because I've got the joster berry, the rhubarb and the goji berry all in one square of this. It's divided into four with bricks. Um, so you've got a little walkway, not that you can particularly use the walkway. But yeah, so it's got fruits in there, gooseberries in there, but there's also um, what looks like a, a birch growing in the middle of the gooseberries now. Might leave that though. And then all the Jerusalem artichokes are in that square. And then the final square has got bronze fennel. And I did put asparagus in there last year and I've seen a few fronds so there's still some some living in there but I don't think that was the best place to put that so um, I'm not going to worry about those they were ones I grew from from seed anyway actually there might have been a couple of crowns in there that I bought cheap um, but not much of a loss really so yeah I think that's the plan but um, yeah better get the spade and crack on Welcome back, we're now on day five. Um, yeah, you remember before I was saying um, things need to get worse before they get better, but it hadn't, well now it has. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my nice clear space here is now once more cluttered because mom and I took back all of this ivy yesterday and um, that was quite a job. So um, there was all sorts of things underneath here as well, uh, wood, pallets, um, boxes, chairs, uh, all the flimsies, a shopping trolley, <laughs> everything that was under here has come out. The ivy has been cut back. Uh, we've done a little pruning around the plum tree. Uh, there's, there was plenty of brambles and they've gone into the bin. Um, but essentially at the moment, uh, it's a mess. It's a mess again. And you know what? I need a day off. I need a day off. Um, but what we have done and I'm really pleased by is to get all that compost out of the wardrobe because I did the top layer myself and then at the bottom of the wardrobe it was just solid. It was absolute solid topsoil with loads of stones in which obviously you don't want to be using to mulch. So that kind of got shoved into where the dead hedge is. Um, and then we also tipped out the hotbed and that stuff was great. And that has now gone into the compost heap. So that's fine. Uh, I also took out obviously the rhubarb that was growing in there and have now gone down to the plot um, this morning and planted that out. And I have to share with you while I was at the plot, I did harvest another sweet corn and we did a massive water. So that's what we've been doing this morning. Mum again came down to help. What would I do? What would I do without my mum, hey? Um, helping me out. So uh, so we watered the plot this morning. We watered the dog and, and then I'm back here and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, no, no, it's the weekend. It's Saturday now and uh, I, I need a day off. So I'm just going to leave it. Going to leave this as a complete mess and uh, go off and have a nice weekend. So, so what did I say? We're on day five. So we'll see what happens for day six. Maybe, maybe see you on day seven. <laughs> well, we're on day seven. Um, nothing has happened since I last spoke to you. I had a couple of days off from the garden, haven't we, Dory? She's just smelling a cat that went by. <laughs> um, so it's actually first day back at work today. Um, so I've been working all day. It's nice and warm right now, but um, there is a storm coming. So everything that's left to do, because I did say I was doing this within seven days, uh, has to be done right now. So 
what we're going to do, Dory, is just crack on. We're going to crack on and uh, see how much we can get done. And being that I've probably time lapsed you out in this video, um, I'll just just close you off and uh, crack on with it. And then I'll show you what we ended up with. All right. See you in a few. Okay, it's a couple of hours later and I'm just feeling the first spots of rain. So I'm saying it's done. <laughs> It was a big uh, final push. So as we uh, approach, let me remind you of where we started. And now after kind of seven days of work, this is what we've ended up with. Now, clearly this is not perfect um, and I think the reality is in every garden you need a bit of a staging area especially when you're kind of growing veg and trying to do it on the scale that I am doing it in both the garden and the allotment. To be fair some of this stuff can go down to the allotment some of the uglier kind of boxes and um, containers and stuff uh, can be very functional down there without looking you know not that that pretty in the home garden <laughs> the shopping trolley for instance can probably go down there um but there are things that i'm going to need my flimsies and i could take them all apart and put them in the shed but i'm it's too lazy to do that really um, and all the other little staging bits and actually when the tomatoes and the chilies and the peppers are all done in the greenhouse some of those that staging will go back into the greenhouse um, to have the, to store the, the overwintering stuff but um, pretty proud of myself really thankful for mom for coming and helping me because I think I could have done this on my own. I don't think I could have done it without you. And you might think that sounds very weird, but without making myself accountable to you and making this YouTube video, I'm pretty sure that I would have given up and uh, not done this final push this evening. Um, I'm really pleased with my dead hedge. I think that's worked really well. It's, I'm going to need to do a trip to the tip, but I'm not going to need to do 10 trips to the tip. So, so that's great. Yeah, I'm really happy with that, actually. I think it's... Um, such a great thing for biodiversity in the garden. I've always wanted a dead hedge, but not had a border to do it in the garden. So I think that's been a nice, uh, nice resolution for, for all of that material. And um, I've spent quite a lot of time gathering the various bricks that were making the cold frame around the um, wardrobe and that was stacked over on the broken bench in the corner there and uh, building this uh, very wiggly wall, um, not very stable, wouldn't want like, anything to knock into it because it'll all come down. But um, it creates an edging for the dead hedge and I, I think it, it looks all right. You know, it's all very makeshift down here, but. And I'm not sure how much particularly I want to sit at my table and chairs down here and look at my um, empty flimsies or whatever. But um, I don't know. We've got the Jerusalem artichokes here. We've got the rhubarb, the gooseberries, the goji berry, the josta berry. The fennel is uh, flowering. So, and all the, uh, the smell of this, the scent of this honeysuckle is just intoxicating. So although it still has its messy areas, um, it is a staging area, but now at least it's a functional area that I can get to. I can get to my compost heaps now. I can walk up to the shed without getting battered by all the uh, foliage overhanging. So, yeah, I think a job well done. So thank you for joining me this week. Thank you for keeping me accountable. And uh, yeah, back to normal programming next week. Take care.